Okay, Hi. how's it going? We're going to look at um, BIM Vision, which you've hopefully downloaded. It's a free IFC um, application. It's an IFC viewer and it does a whole lot more than that, um, such as clash detection and quantity takeoff. Um, they are the added on plugins, um, which we'll look at in, uh, in a few minutes, but um, we'll look at navigating our model in BIM Vision first, and then we'll get into the, what the plugins can do. Um, so this is the interface and it looks and feels very like any Windows application with tabs across the top and with icons down here in the ribbon. So we're just gonna open an IFC file that you may have exported or that I, I may have given to you. Um, and in this case, I'm gonna navigate uh, to um, a file I've saved based on that warehouse we've been working through. So I'm gonna click that. Um, again, it's not a DWFX file that you might've used in other tutorials. It's an IFC, it's an open BIM format that can be pretty much exported from most BIM applications. Um, and it's the ultimate, I suppose, interoperable file because it's non-native related. Um, so it's not assigned or owned by any particular vendor. Um, so this is, again, you'll notice it's the warehouse um, that we've worked on in the past. And it's the IFC file and you navigate it um, by holding down, um, and you should be getting fairly used to this by now, holding down your left click button, pressing and holding that and kind of moving around the drawing to spin it back and forth, up and down. Um, you can pan left, right, up and down by pushing down on your mouse wheel. It'll keep the rotation the same, but you can kind of reorientate it on the screen. And you can zoom in and zoom out with your mouse wheel. So from a, from a navigating perspective, um, you really need the mouse. And the mouse makes it a lot easier to navigate. Um, we also have, I'm gonna move, if I'm not on it already, I'm gonna click on view. So I can use this to rotate left and right and with the view icons. Okay, um, I can click any one of these icons to orientate left, right, front, back. Um, this is quite handy, this story slide. I really like this applicability in this particular software. Um, if, you Z, if, you, oh, Z, if you use the Z axis, axis here and slide it left or right, um, it'll basically pull it up and down based on how the stories are applied. So what objects are in the ground floor, what objects are in the first floor, um, depending on the height you want to separate them at. You want to get back, click reset. Do the same with the Y axis. Um, in fact, you can use both, pulling out the Z axis, pulling out the Y axis, and you kind of get a differentiation there. Now, you're not really gonna use this for a whole lot more than just kind of having a look at what's in the model. See how it looks, see how it's orientated, see how it's broken up. Uh, it's a quite handy little feature. You can zoom in and zoom out and navigate when those splits happen, okay? So for the most part, I'm just gonna reset that and I'll be working in this complete view. You've also got the opportunity to select any of the objects in the model. Um, let's say um, I click on the roof and I wanna hide this roof. So what I need to do now is click from view into objects and I'm gonna right click this particular object, select it first and then right click it and hide it. So now I've hidden my roof um, and I can pick maybe even a wall, click this particular wall here or any wall, even a window, right click and hide. So there I've hidden a couple of different objects in the model, maybe um, gives you the opportunity to scroll through, have a look, um, open, up a, open up a wall, open up a door, um, or open up your roof just to give you a look inside. If I wanna show everything again, I'll click display. Okay, also in terms of how the IFC file is broken up, um, you've got the option here to show that IFC file per its, uh, I suppose, its native structure. So when the IFC file, or when the Revit file, gets mapped into the IFC structure, it puts all the Revit properties or Revit objects within the IFC structure. So there is a bit of, I suppose, a bit of a disadvantage in this um, process because it has to map from one schema into another schema and then can be viewed. So if there isn't an object that fits in the IFC standard or the IFC schema, it can be kind of put in a proxy. And we discussed that before in our tutorials, or sorry, in our lectures. 
Um, there is a couple of different ways the IFC file can be shown here. So you'll see that this is the IFC structure. I've clicked on structure. It's broken up into uh, what I suppose is SiteWorks, or which is the project itself, and um, what is the site. Now the only thing it looks like that's in the site is this particular, um, I suppose, asphalt paving. So if I click the little checkbox up here beside project, I see nothing. If I just wanna see what's in the site category, and that's all I have in the site category. So that is um, site term Academy, our build up of the, uh, I suppose, the driveway into the building and surrounds. I'm gonna uncheck that and have a look at what's in the building. So these walls, these boundary walls, and maybe the trees and the markings should also be in the site, but they're actually designated um, per the Rev original architecture model in the wrong category so it's come and it's mapped um, it's been mapped into this building category um, for the most part we don't have to worry too much about that it doesn't really matter what's in the site or in the building but if it was modeled correctly they should be separated in the right uh, in the right categories let's take a look at what's in the building um, and in this structure it is broken up first into the different stories so let's uncheck un un uncheck everything um, and maybe just take a look at what is designated as in the foundations. So you can see here, um, we've got rising walls, we've got the strip foundations, we got two pads, or maybe four pads, but some of the other pads aren't there. That's because they're in the ground floor, okay? Um, or ground floor up the first floor. So they're designated in the wrong category. They should all be in the top of the foundations, and they're not, you can see it's missing there. Um, so let's take a look maybe what's in the first floor and that is all we have in the first floor so again there may be a mistake there we're missing a, cute, a few walls a few of the outside walls um, or external walls that are in the ground floor but probably should be split in such a way that uh, there's a category or part of the walls in the ground floor and then there's a separate part of the walls or external walls in the top of the foundation but from a quantity Quantity surveying point of view, um, as in a total quantity uh, quantities takeoff point of view, that won't make much of a difference. But from a modeling point of view, and maybe a scheduling point of view, um, it should. So each object should be in the correct category. But this is probably a good example of, of uh, something. You know, you're never you're never possibly going to get a get a um, you know a perfect model. There will be issues, um, and then that is the category that's in. The top of our wall i suppose which designated as the roof so we got our structural steel roof we got our parapet um, and it looks like the roof itself isn't in there but it should be so if i click the entire project um, folder it's folders and parent um, or subfolders and sub sub items and um, just like you'd see in a df dfwx file or dfx file um, the other breakdown structure here is types if you click that now this is the one i usually use so this is a fairly standard breakdown irrespective of what story it's in. Um, so if I just wanna see my footings, for example, I can click, unclick the entire project by clicking types and just click uh, footing, the footing category. And in the footing category, if I wanted to click the uh, parent folder, I'd see all my footings. So let's say, for example, I click, um, let's see, this little footing here which is an eight wall foundation 815 strip. It's that one that's in green. How do I know it's that particular one? Because as I click on them, um, it highlights the foundation I'm looking at. Um, once I click on the actual foundation, I see it visually displayed there. That is the item there. And down here is the content of the foundation. So all our categories, all our information that comes out of that object is here and available to us in the object properties. So I got dimensions, constraints, I've got the element specific naming structure. Um, I could even have, and it doesn't show it here, um, I could even have some base quantities exports, um, identity data, there's a world of information depending on how much detail is in that particular object, depending on the level of detail that is in the actual native file format when, it's get, when it gets exported to IFC. So um, what I'm really concerned with here from a quantity surveying point of view is the names of the parameters or objects and of course the dimensions. Now be careful um, with the dimensions. 
they're not always perfect. You want to validate them, make sure they're okay. Like for example, if I'm looking at this, there is a little measurement tool here. If I click measurement and take a look at the area of say the top plane, it says it's 1.956 and that looks like it's correct. And um, if I take a, um, a volume from the selection, so a volume from that selection is 0.596. And is that correct? Yeah, 0 0.596, well, 189 in terms of going to excessive decimal places. Um, and let's take a little measurement length, edge. So from one edge to the other, and it looks like it is, whoop, let me try that again, uh, 2.4 meters in terms of the length of that foundation. Now, what is the length saying here? It's saying that it's 2.173 or 2173. Now, it looks like all the dimensions are correct except what's coming out there in terms of the measurement now in my experience just be careful of the length measurement of objects it could be dependent on how they're joined and um, it could be dependent on this isn't quantity surveying software as such it, so it doesn't really know our measurement rules so it may add a length to a width and give you that as a length. So there's a couple of ways you can get around that by kind of double checking um, or spot checking um, quantities just to make sure that they're coming in uh, correctly. But obviously with the more experience you get with BIM models, you know, you, you'll be able to look out for where those mistakes are because the same mistakes um, keep popping up time and time again. Um, so that was our strip footing selection. If I wanna add, I'm just gonna collapse that folder. If I want to add the pads, now that interestingly enough, the pads are not in the foundations, um, I suppose, parent folder, they're in the slabs, and they're also in with ground floor slabs. So I'm gonna click that entire ground floor slabs, first floor slabs. Um, so I need to uncheck, I'm gonna bring this little crosshair down. I'm gonna uncheck what I don't need here. So I've selected the entire folder, and I'm gonna uncheck my floor um, objects. So my stair object that's in there as well, um, there's a floor object there, and the pitched roof. So all I have now here, and it's worth taking a look, um, is, is the uh, pad foundations and the strip foundations. Okay, and I wanna take a look at how it's modeled, see that the, they're joined correctly. Um, and if they are, I'm happy enough to move on from that. So. It's worth playing around with this um, if you want to just have a look at certain elements, um, certain categories. You can uncheck your entire types. I just want to see my doors. Okay, there they are. I want to see my windows with my doors. There they are. Um, and maybe I want to see my stairs with that. So all I've got shown there is stairs and my windows and doors. And um, maybe I'll even show my roof um, for some reason it's not coming up there. I may take, take its time. Uh, roof, beam, and railing. So you can pick and choose what you want to display or what you don't want to display. You want to show it again, you click types. The entire checkbox at the top. Um, or if you want to just look at one particular object, you want to drill right down to, let's say, one particular wall. Or I just want to see my rising walls. I'm going to uncheck everything. Ooh, everything's off. Um, and just check those rising walls. Two and five, let's say. Those two and five rising walls. And there we go. Okay. And that's how you navigate the model based on either the model structure or the model types are using, I suppose, the views here and hiding and displaying as needed. Um, this is very much like the model structure that comes into Costex um, when you click uh, the model tab and you can kind of navigate um, through that model. So I'm just gonna click it all again and make sure everything's displayed. There it is. And uh, that is pretty much navigating uh, the model. We'll move on now in a second to um, taking off some quantities from this model.